Okay. Um, so as you're coming in, uh, please put your first name, your last name, what you do, and um, where you are in this world. That'd be great. Now we have people from Brazil, which is amazing. Um, so where you are, your location, it could be state, state and country, and um, what you do. So thank you for doing that. Um, appreciate it. It's always cool to see people from all over the country participating in the DLE. Um, and it's been amazing just since the start of this whole new era, it seems like how we've been able to connect with people like me who are outside of, of Pittsfield and then now the world. Um, and so it's a special time to have all of you with us. And with that, I'm Jonathan Katz. I'm part of the DLE Breakfast Club Committee. And we put on um, the Breakfast Club every two months now for special programs like what we're doing today. And I'll be moderating today along with Emily Rome, my colleague here, and she's at the um, she's in the Berkshires. She works at the Berkshire Museum in Pittsfield, Mass. And um, we encourage you to participate. This is a, an open forum, and we occasionally have a guest speaker to come in, like we have today. And we encourage questions and and we facilitate conversation as much as possible here. And we intentionally keep this pretty pretty close knit just so we can foster that conversation. And we'll be actively using the chat. Ted will be moderating that. Thank you again, Ted. And uh, this is a chance for you to kind of grow your network and connect with people like uh, from Brazil and from and, the, and people from Brazil, you can connect with people from America. And that's the beauty of the DLE. And um, it's just great, I guess, to see all the diversity. So with that, um, if you want to go to the next slide, that would be great. And then we'll turn it over to this is our some of just some of our rules. And just add your name to the title. Yep, complete the complete the quick poll if you have not. I think Ted just resent that. That would be great. And um, thank you for putting in who you are. So with that, I'll turn it over to um, Emily to moderate the rest of the conversation and introduce Roberta. All right, thank you, John. Yeah. Uh, yes, before we welcome um, our guest speaker today, just wanted to give you a moment to look at the results of um, the DLE's recent poll uh, of its members. We asked people in the last year, have you used informational interviews for a job search or for career development? Um, so 42%, as uh, you may be able to see, said yes, 46% uh, said no, and 12% said um, they don't know what it is. Uh, so we will start off in a moment here by hearing um, what Roberta uh, says informational interviews are. That was helpful poll feedback to know where to start. Uh, I suppose I would be curious to hear how many of those knows. Um, had done informational interviews in prior years, but maybe when we have uh, some time for uh, you to join the conversation, we can hear about that. Um, so you can go to the next slide, Ted, thank you. Uh, I'm very pleased to welcome our guest speaker, uh, Roberta Gasparre, director of the Smithsonian Institution's Discovery Theater. Uh, with more than 35 years in the field of educational theater, Roberta is recognized as a leader in cultural and arts-based learning. Uh, she's a Fulbright scholar whose primary interest uh, is in heritage and traditional arts. Um, and she's created a museum theater form that really weaves the factual and the imaginative, exciting interactive experiences for audiences of all ages. Uh, Roberta considers uh, mentoring interns, uh, guiding them, uh, including guiding them and setting up informational interviews to be a highlight of her career, which was lovely to hear from you, Roberta, because I was uh, had the good fortune to be an intern with you a few years back. Um, so uh, Roberta will discuss how informational interviews can boost your career uh, or entrepreneurial goals, how to begin this process. Uh, and more. So welcome, Roberta. Thank you. Well, I consider myself lucky, Emily, to have had you as an intern. Oh, good to hear. Um, well, yeah, my, uh, the first thing I want to ask you is to tell us how you would define informational interview, mm -hmm. and perhaps just in, as importantly, tell us what an informational interview is not. Certainly. 
information line reviews, <clears throat> I consider actually the first building block in creating a connection with someone. And you're really going in, as we teach it at the Smithsonian, you're really going in not for to ask anything, but to express your curiosity about something that someone does well, or a business or a discipline that is interesting to you um, and that you want to learn more about and that they have knowledge about. So you're going in with all of your attention on that person and what they do and not really bothering with the attention that you might give to what you do. Now, it works out because they will in turn, if they're good, be interested in who you are and why you sought them out and what brought you to this moment of being interested in their business, in their passion, in their skill, their art, their expertise. And they're going to value you for that kind of uh, interest. Mm. Um, what it is not, it is not a place where you're going to ask for a job. It is not a place where you're going to ask anything about money. It is not a place where you're going to have expectations of coming away with something concrete at this first touch. All it is, is you saying to this person, I think that what you do is amazing. And I really want to ask you, how did you get into it? What did you do? What did you find it challenging? What are some of the uh, really exciting things that, I mean, what's your favorite thing that's happened and what has been the crazier things that happened? In forming this personal relationship around, not the person, because oftentimes people, they feel suspicious if you're interested in them personally. And they don't want to give out anything personal. That's great, actually, mm -hmm. because it keeps it in the realm of business. And therefore, you can be interested in their topic, in their profession. And that kind of uh, intellectual curiosity often allows a connection to form. But you not you don't go in looking for that connection. You're really mm. looking for information. Got it. Got it. Quick follow up on one thing you mentioned. You said you know don't mention, don't ask um, about money. Is you know would you say asking? Do you feel like this career has a path with a living wage? Is that a reasonable question? Is it about specifics of salary we shouldn't be asking? I think that that's. Uh, information that you can get on the side. Okay. I think the minute you bring money into the conversation in a first inter informational interview, everybody's walls will start to go mm -hmm. up because they, they think, oh, they're actually here for a job no matter what they say. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't care. You don't really care about <laughs> that. We really care about the meat of mm -hmm. the topic. And, and the money talk will come later. Got it. Right. I mean, ultimately, oftentimes, in, if you're already in a career, if you're, uh, you know, a mid-career professional, even early career professional, that informational talk, if it goes really well and you hit the sweet spot, you might be able to say, which I do all the time, ah, I love what you do. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know what I do? Because I, am, what, I wonder what we can do together. And then... Yeah. I'm, uh, oftentimes I'll walk out with a project, but that is, that's not going to happen every time, mm -hmm. but yeah. you're listening for the opportunity. Yeah. Laying the, laying the groundwork sometimes. Yeah. Uh, next, Roberta, I want to ask you, um, why do you encourage uh, your Discovery Theater interns to do informational interviews? Tell me a little more <laughs> about that. One of the most difficult things, especially in this hybrid world, is networking. People don't run into each other. And especially if you're wanting to, to go one step to the right or the left of what you already do, there's a likelihood you're not going to meet that person in casual conversations or in even in business meetings. You just, 
so if you identify an area that you're really interested in, it really is important to just understand it as part of your business to make the reach to say, I want to know about this. So you, and then you say, well, who does that? In, when, in my coaching sessions with my interns, I'll say, well, what are you interested in? And I get everything, library science, political science, international affairs, um, the arts, children, education. And then I'll say, okay, so specifically, what is that? And then I'll say to them, okay, let's find someone who does what you're interested in. And then I usually make them research it because it's, it's an educational exercise. And, and they'll come up with five names and I'll usually know one of them. Yeah. Um, but you don't have to know. You can always cold mail somebody. And you want to say something like, now it's a Smithsonian, it's easy because the interns say, I'm interning with the Smithsonian as part of my internship, we do informational interviews. And I'm really interested in your business, in what you do. If you're on your own, probably the most interesting thing you could say would be, my name is X and I do X. And in my business, <clears throat> excuse me, I've run across your organization and I'm very interested in what you do. And I'm wondering whether we could do an informational interview by phone, Zoom, or in person, mm -hmm. whichever is good. Um, I expect it to only take half an hour of your time, 20 minutes to a half an hour of your time. And I really appreciate hearing back from you. I'm very, very interested in the, your successes in X. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you've laid the groundwork. Sometimes you will never, ever get a response. Why? Because they don't see it in their scope of work to do these. Mm -hmm. And they should. I mean, in the government, every it's in everybody's uh, PD. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily in it. So that you have to, to kind of cast the net broadly. You can never have too many inter informational interviews, but you would, can often have too few. Hmm. Got it. All right. Yeah, that was definitely, uh, you dove into something else I wanted to ask you about. How do you just request this interview? And I think for a lot of people, that first step, that cold call can be the most intimidating part. So beyond what you've mentioned, any other tips yeah. or advice about how to do that? Well, once you identify an interest in your area, then I say you take the people that you already know and you confess this interest. I'm very, very interested in film. And right now I'm doing museum theater, but I know that I'm going to be, have to become a screenwriter in this hybrid world. Mm -hmm. I just don't know where to start. I wish I could talk to someone. And your circle of people Somebody will know somebody. And then you write and say, well, I was talking to Julia and Julia mentioned you, that you do this incredible work in documentary filmmaking. And I work at the Smithsonian as a theater artist, but I'm moving into film. And I wonder whether I could do an informational interview just to pick your brain about, about film uh, because I know nothing about it and I need to. Yeah. And, and so I say, you, you have more resources than you think you do because people's interests are varied. So if you go into a conversation with any of your circle or your, or your best friend or your wife or your husband's or the, the relatives and you just mention the topic and see who says, oh, I know something about that. Well, who should I talk to is your next question yeah. if, they, if they say michelle obama don't do it <laughs> yeah 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 some people are a little tougher to get a hold of perhaps <laughs> yeah thanks for sharing those kind of examples models of how that could work um next can you tell us um just what are some good questions to ask in this type of interview well i always start with i just think that Animal husbandry 
is an amazing little known field. And I, how did you get into this field? How did you, how do you find yourself successful in X? I think it's a fascinating, and I would love to know your path. How did you get here? And then the second thing I would say is, is, um, and what, what kind of, of organizational structure do you have? Is it a top-down structure? Are you working in, in groups? Um, who, who do you partner with? Who are your collaborators? You're asking questions. First of all, how did I get there? Who are the community? Because you don't necessarily want that person. You want their community. You want to understand how it's set up. So you say, so who do you work with? How does, how does the sausage get made, as they say? How, how does it come together? And they will probably say something about, about this collaboration or that government grant or, or some, and you say, oh, wow, right, funding. Do you get funding? Is it, are you working with venture capital? And that's as close as I get to money. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> But, you're, but then you say, well, what do you think is your most, uh, you know, it's, you're really unsung heroes in every field. What do you think is your most uh, interesting accomplishment mm -hmm. maybe nobody knows about? So I'm asking them what they value. You're asking them about their origin story. <clears throat> you're asking about their community. You're asking about who supports them. And you're asking about uh, what they think is most valuable. And you just then say, this is, this is incredibly fascinating. I can't believe what I'm hearing because it really is so much more complex than I knew. I mean, I always am honestly bowled over by what goes into other people's work. At that point, they will say to me, usually, well, what about you? Hmm. And then you do your elevator speech. Yeah. Your Got it. All right. Well, everybody, I do have one or two more questions for Roberta, but before, before I go to those, I want to give all of you a chance uh, to ask Roberta any questions you have about the, how to conduct an informational interview. Um, so you're welcome to um, put a question in the chat or just unmute and share your question aloud. Yes, talk to me. Mm -hmm. I'm here for an inter informational interview. <laughs> yeah. Consider this practice, yes, perhaps for an informational interview, what would you ask? <laughs> yeah. Bert, I have a, I'll go for go Julia. I'm interested in the question of time. You know, when people are afraid of, of approaching somebody, um, you, you said half an hour, 20 minutes. Okay. How, how, do, how, do, how do we get over the feeling that we are taking over other people's times without giving them something in exchange? Uh -huh. Well, first of all, you're not giving them not, nothing in exchange. You are giving them a, a, a platform where they can really talk about their work. I always say 20 minutes to a half hour because 20 minutes is nothing. 20 minutes is a cup of coffee. And I believe that you, you always need to know that you are the next generation of whatever it is you're interested in. You are it. So, the people who are sitting in the, in the de at the desk really are looking for good people just to be associated with, perhaps not to hire, but they want you as much as you want them. And you can always end the conversation with, I hope you don't mind if we stay in touch. I have something brewing, I, you know, I, I'd love to hear and anything that, that you're doing. And may I get on one of your, may I get uh, subscribed to your newsletter? 
perhaps we'll get a chance to work together in the future. So that is really, I think you, it is a business meeting, whether you know it or not. And you must take the first step. The cold, cold emails, nothing. Think of it as an audition or an interview. We're going to do hundreds of them. And even you might have conversations that don't go anyplace. Who cares? And many dates do not end up in a relationship, as we all know. So don't worry about it. Go out there, put yourself out there, and just see what comes up. And if you, if there's a synergy there with you and the person you're talking to, that 20 minutes could turn into an hour. Yeah. Um, uh, Who else? Somebody I see else. we have a hand raised in our hand raise function. Is that Elisa? Yeah, feel free to share. Your Alyssa, time. thank you. Alyssa, thanks. Yeah. Um, so I, I agree. I've done a bunch of informational interviews. Of course, they've been with um, people I've worked with a long time ago, but who I haven't spoken with, but those that I only need 20 minutes of your time turns into an hour, like really, <laughs> like, I'm sorry to take up so much of your time. And they say, no, 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 we, I'm having so much fun. So um, <clears throat> my question is, I mean, I, I've been doing a couple of cold emails um, be out very, very far outside of my um, my circle without any referrals. Like I don't know, have anybody in common and yeah. haven't heard anything. Is there like some keywords or something that would get my email noticed? Because um, that, yeah. I think that's really tricky. Um, well, there are a few things you can do. One of them is to use their own name. So look up the person you want to interview and read everything they've ever written. Is, is there an interview that you can read? Is there a video you can see? And you can say, you can say, I have, I, I have been, I heard an interview with you on NPR or in, on, you know, I saw your article on LinkedIn and I really, really was fascinated with X. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether I could talk to you about that. I'm doing inter informational interviews as part of my fill in the blank. Okay. Job, internship, project. Mm -hmm. If it's couched in a frame that seems reasonable, people will be more interested in talking to you. And okay. the second thing you can do is you can, you can, look at the scholarship around whatever it is you're passionate about and mention somebody else. I was reading, I was reading the, the article about blah by blah. And I, I realized that I really wanted to talk to you and get your take on this topic. Hmm. Because I know that you have been working in marketing internet marketing, you know, mm -hmm. you know, TikTok as the future or whatever. And I really would love, I, I would love to get your take on this. Okay. And, Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. And you might want to say something like I'm writing for medium or I'm doing a blog post or I have a, a I have a little podcast. I would love to include your, your thoughts in this. Yes. Give yourself legitimacy. You know, hello, we, we live in this, the internet world now that we can give ourselves um, uh, uh, legitimacy. We don't have to wait for somebody else to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. I also might try and I feel like, sorry, I don't mean to add some thoughts. I actually had the same question. I was thinking about it. Um, and I was like, I would, I'm so used to cold emailing because I'm in sales, but I was like, if, but if it's in a non-business way, like in terms of you're not, it's not for your job, maybe even like social media, like even like finding their Instagram could be good because I feel like people still look at their, their, I guess, direct messages more so than their email. Cause I feel like email is so hard nowadays. You know what I mean? Yes. It goes to spam and stuff like that. So you never know. Well, I have to say that I, I don't do one platform. I will do, I will send an email and I will also um, 
send a LinkedIn message and probably a Facebook message, especially in the arts where people post everything on every platform imaginable. So I will personal message them in three places and say, hey, I'm trying to get in touch with you. I have a question. Where do you find that they respond the most? Well, in the arts, they respond um, to Facebook messaging the most. Now, I will often say, I sent you an email, check your email because I sent you an email. I'm at, I wonder if you can help me and or whatever you want to say. But if you have something in email this, because you can't say much on social media. So you, you just say, hi, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working on a project. I'm from XYZ business and I'm working on a project and I sent you an email about it. Um, could you take a look? Many thanks. Well, mm -hmm. just, just take a moment of your time. Yeah. All right, yeah, that, that's all that's more helpful advice. Thanks, Roberta. So I will quickly ask you two other questions and then I think okay. uh, we should be able to make some time for um, a breakout room uh, activity. Uh, so Roberta, I want to hear from you what follow-up should be done uh, oh. after these kind of interviews. Yes, yes, yes. Follow up, please follow up. Follow up with an email or and messages on social media, personal, you know, direct messages to thank them. Or as, and if you want to mention something you got out of it, it's wonderful. And all and say, um, I so appreciate you and I can't wait to see what you are saying next or what your what your next project is depending on what, how the conversation went so you're assuming that you are now their follower mm. you are part of their community at this point and if, and then that's not the end of the follow-up then the next thing that they write you write back to them and say i saw the article that was posted in, in such and so journal um, so insightful. I really thought that this, the point that you made about blah, so you, you actually read the article, <laughs> yeah. you didn't read it, and that, that this is what was interesting. And so at that point, you said thing two, that's not the end of the follow-up. Then when you do something interesting, or when something comes your way, you write back and say, hey, I hope that I hope the year has been going well. And I keep I cannot forget the wonderful 20 minutes we spent together <laughs> or whatever. Um, I just wanted to let you know that that I'm opening a show in my world. I um, created something for American history on the lunch counter sit ins. And it was very successful, written up in the post. Here's the article. I hope you enjoy it. And perhaps we can get together for coffee some someday. I really remember um, my meeting as a highlight of the project that I was working on. At that point, you now have value independently of that conversation, yes? But that's not the end of the follow-up. <laughs> then the next time they write something, you hit them up again and you say, oh my gosh, that was awesome. At that point, if they're interested, they will say something to you like, thanks so much. Um, it's really nice to hear from you. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. That question is the jackpot because independently, they're interested in what you're doing now without you prompting them. And I will tell you that people have gotten work from this. I mean, um, Moss Madigan, who came from Carnegie Mellon to us, uh, popped back up a few years later as the um, chief financial officer of one of the th major theaters in town. Um, and it was, oh, ha, hello. I mean, one of my students who uh, I trained way back when is now the executive director of the Massachusetts Arts Council. Uh -huh. um, Harris, is Michael Bobbitt. 
Um, so they're out there doing great things. Uh, why? Because they learned how to ask just to say hello, mm -hmm. just, just to make the connection. And, and you will become an asset to, to your, the person you talk to. Yeah, great to hear those, a couple of those success stories. Um, and then my final question for you at this point is uh, just want to take a moment to look at the flip side of this. If, um, you know, any of the people here on this Zoom call are ever um, asked to do an informational interview, asked to share their experience with someone, um, how can they be of genuine support to the person interviewing them? Well, um, great. That's a great question, actually. So <laughs> let's say you're, you've been asked by some young pop who comes in full of piss and vinegar, excuse my French, and, and just is very interested in everything. And so the thing you wanna do is try and listen and find out what they're actually interested in. And you actually do a, a reverse informational interview then and you say, well, what is it about screenwriting that in my screenwriting that interests you? Okay, so that's, that's great. And then you can be helpful to them by narrowing their field of questioning. Remember, it's an educational experience for them. So as you sit there, you want to help them to become better interviewers. And then you want to ask about them. You'll, you never know. You never know what this young person or older person um, sitting in front of you might bring with them in terms of community, connections, skills, and loyalty, if you will. We all want to grow our communities. And especially if you're going into a new community, you want, really do want to grow it. So that it behooves both parties to look for that connection. Yeah, got it. Is that good? That good? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge and enthusiasm on this subject. You will all um, be given an opportunity to join a breakout room in a moment, and there will be a member of the DLE breakfast club meeting giving you some instructions um, and prompts there. Uh, Roberta will still be on the Zoom call. Uh, you may see her in your breakout room and also when we have some time to reconvene after those breakout rooms. So with that, I think I can give Ronick the go to open those breakout rooms. Okay, hope you all um, had uh, some good valuable time uh, to connect on those ideas. Uh, yeah, I think I am now handing it back over to uh, another of our members of the Breakfast Club uh, committee for um, as we reconvene here, John. Yes, yeah, thank you, Emily, appreciate it. <laughs> Um, so hopefully that was great and you all had some good discussions there. Um, so Roberta, I would, I, I'm curious, do you have any good observations from the group you were in? Well, the group I was in, I love talking to Anna because she said how new all of this is for her and that she has done a little bit of this, but now she really wants to go back in and explore it more. Um, and I suggested to her that she does think about the relationship because um, if you don't, if this is not something that's done in Brazil, then go through the, the person themselves. And I think that, that, that you can, don't think of any of this as hard and fast rules is the big thing for everybody. Shape it as you find it to be successful for you. Very nice. Anybody else have any any other thoughts that they, they would care to share about their breakout rooms? Roberta, can you give some advice about having you, you, you put out there, well, hopefully they're going to ask you about yourself and have that elevator pitch ready. What's an enticing way to grab somebody in in 45 seconds so that they say, ooh, yeah, I, I definitely want to spend some time with you. Yes. Well, the thing that you want to start out by saying, I think, is, well, 
the one of the reasons I was so interested in this, in talking with you, and and you have two paths. Either is because it's so different from what I do. I am in the art sector, and I'm totally involved with putting together large-scale performances for museums that are based on educational goals. So you're taking what you do and say, put it, saying what it is, who it's for, who, who um, what it is, who's your organizational, what's the organizational umbrella, who's the target audience? So the meat of the matter, who is sponsoring you? Who's your who's your frame? Who who is it for? Is it for business leaders, children, teachers, inventors, whatever? And then then why are you so? Why do you love it? And I love it because it challenges me every single day to be specific to the audience that I'm looking at and create something really right for them. So and that's the end of it. So I think if you go in, well, I'm in X, sponsored by X. I'm at the Smithsonian, um, and I work for the general visitor and all the people who come to the Smithsonian, also children. And I, it really challenges me to be X, Y, or Z. And you can either say, and that's and it, this aspect of it is like what you do. And I really wanted to hear how you approach it, or it's so totally different than what you do that I really wanted to get a, a hear how you approach what you do. So basically, here's who I am, but we're really talking about you. My advice. Nice. I have some um, some just some thoughts before I'll turn over to Linda to kind of close this out. And I've used information interviews a lot. I think I I would venture to say like maybe over 20 to 30 informational interviews and probably even more just in passing that are not even technically them, right? You just have conversations. But just for Blendy, I, I know I've learned just a, 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 an amazing amount of information um, just by necessity pretty much to create the business. I mean, um, talking with engineers, from a business background is completely foreign to me. Don't even know how to speak their language. Um, but the common denominator is how I found those people to talk to is I don't even know they exist, first of all, right? You, you kind of don't know, but is getting into groups. So a group called Valley Venture Mentors in Springfield, Mass, which is an entrepreneurial group, helped me to get a lot of bridge, a lot of conversations. And then I find over time, the the best way is just that person knows somebody else and they say oh um, and then you say to them i'm looking for uh to understand manufacturing more and they say oh great i actually know a guy who does all the manufacturing for xyz company in china and you're like oh would you be open i think this is the key word would you be open to introducing me to them to start a conversation um and then that person knows somebody else and then you know kind of just the chain just keeps going on but if you're legitimately cold outreaching to them, as I know all too well in sales, uh, Roberta, you hit on it too. Like you need to, you need to do a multi-attack approach. You need to do LinkedIn and Facebook and, um, and email because many times there have been, you know, you have to follow up four times with them in a pretty, pretty timely manner. I mean, even, even four times in a month to really kind of go at them and get their response is, is what's needed. And I think people really, sometimes they, they don't understand that, but you almost have to take a sales-like approach just to get to information. Even though it, it might seem so small to you, um, it could really impact your life. And, uh, and also yeah. follow, the, follow them and yeah. like, like their posts. Right. Become part of their community from the yeah. outside. And hopefully your informational interview will bring you closer to the inside. So, so this is not necessarily informational interview per se, but this is more sales. There was, uh, there was a person I was intro to for a showroom in Atlanta, which I just came back from, but I emailed them four different times. And then I had another person intro me to the same person. I didn't know it was the same person. And I pretended like I started a whole new chain with them, email chain. And they go, I like your approach. And they finally reached out after like the fifth touch. 
And now we're texting and now we have, you know, I'm connected with him on social media. And I respond to his stories and stuff like that. And that gave me this massive opportunity to go down and, and it was a big opportunity for my business. So it's very true. And with I, that, I think, yeah. I think, I think you can't overstate, you know, someone who knows someone. I mm -hmm. swear to God, you do. Just ask. I'm really interested in string theory. I'm going way out on a limb here, but but who knows, you know, is there anybody who's working in this field from your friends, from your family, from their their family, their extended family? You have a bigger community than you think. 100%. Yeah, thank you so much, Roberta. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah. I've got Maybe a couple things. Yeah, thanks. Ted's going to help me. I got a couple things to close out with. But Roberta, I have like four pages of notes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just I told the story. I didn't. I hope I'm getting an informational interview out of this. But I'm an NPR enthusiast. Our local NPR station has a um, a one minute program called the Academic Minute. I was listening to it yesterday. The speaker was a professor from Quinnipiac College who excels in the art of feedback. Well, that's a big piece of what I do in my vocation. Went on LinkedIn, found him and sent him, introduced myself and sent him a request, just like you said, love to get 20 minutes just to get into your head about the research you've been doing on feedback, particularly how it's been affected in this virtual workplace. Yeah. We'll see. I hope I get my interview. But, um, you know, I kind of challenge myself to do this at least once, twice a month that I better go and know some nobody and get an interview and try to learn from them. Oh, you have to let me know how it goes. Yeah, I will. I will. So welcome. I'm enthusiastically welcoming you to our community. Thank you so much for your time, Roberta. I, I also want to say you have given us the, the the value of your expertise is incredible. I hope everyone goes on LinkedIn and connects with Roberta and keep the conversation going. <laughs>